As SQL Server has evolved to be able to work with complex data in an ever-widening variety of scenarios, it's added support for more complex data types. One of the more intriguing features, first introduced in SQL Server 2008, is the spatial data types. This is data that relates to points and shapes on a two-dimensional grid, such as you might use to store locations on the surface of the Earth or locations within a large warehouse. With spatial data, you can store location-based data in the database and display it in a client application that uses tools like Google Earth, Microsoft Bing Maps, or any kind of geographic information system, or GIS application. With support for this kind of data, SQL Server now supports the growing use of location-aware applications and other location-based services. SQL Server provides two data types to support spatial data, geometry and geography. Microsoft implemented these data types as system SQL CLR types. They're written in .NET code and use the .NET framework and common language runtime, or CLR. So these types do more than just provide a place to store data. They're rich classes with properties and methods that let you perform sophisticated manipulations of spatial data. Spatial data is a complex feature built on millennia of human map-making experience, with complex algorithms that are based on a variety of standards that support GIS applications and data. As I mentioned, SQL Server includes two spatial data types, geometry and geography that encapsulate the database's support for spatial data. Each data type includes pretty much the same point line, shape, and collection objects, as well as rich sets of methods and properties for working with these shapes. This figure shows the hierarchy of available objects. The way this works is that you define a field or variable as either the geometry or geography data type, and then assign to that field or variable data that describes the point, line, shape, or collection that you want to store. In the figure, the yellow or the lighter objects are abstract objects, while the blue or the darker objects are concrete objects that you can store in the spatial data type. The only difference between the geometry and geography object hierarchies is that in geography, there's a full globe object that represents the complete surface of the Earth and I showed that in the figure as a lighter color and dashed line because it's not part of the geometry object hierarchy. Now the shapes defined by the various spatial objects are vector objects, which are collections of points, lines, curves, polygons, and compound curves. You're likely to use just a few of the spatial objects most often to store and manipulate within SQL Server. One is a point. This is identified by a pair of coordinates, such as an exact location as x and y coordinates, but can also include a z, an elevation, an m measure. And then line string. This is a path along a sequence of points. It's a one-dimensional shape. It has length, but no area, even if multiple connected line strings look like a closed shape. Another object is circular string. This is similar to a line string, but defines a curve as a portion of a circle instead of a straight line. And then the final one that you'll use most often is a polygon. This is a closed two-dimensional shape, a ring. A polygon has both a length property and an area, and it can have holes in its interior, the shapes of which are defined by other smaller polygons. And then the area of the hole is excluded from the area of the outer polygon. You can also create collections of these basic shapes, which includes a multi-point, multi-line string, and multi-polygon, each of which can contain only the specified shapes. If you need a collection of any type of shape, including the multi-shapes, you can use a geom collection or geometry collection. This makes it easier to work with the groups of shapes as a single unit. All right, so as you can see, there's some rich functionality available for working with spatial data. But in earlier versions of Entity Framework, it was hard to work with because there was no built-in support. But all of that changed with Entity Framework 5. All right, so once again, finally. As I mentioned, spatial types have been with us since SQL Server 2008. We finally got support in Entity Framework. It supports both the geometry and geography data types for the location-based data. Now, the types in SQL Server are .NET types, so they have rich interfaces, 
and you can find them all within the system.data.spatial namespace. So you can use these types directly within your application. That's another benefit of Microsoft building these data types within SQL Server using .NET code and assemblies. All right. Now, those types have long been available in .NET, but again, there was no direct support in Entity Framework. And again, this is a feature that requires .NET 4.5. So your application has to target .NET 4.5 in order to use this with Entity Framework 5. If it targets .NET 4, then this feature is not going to be available to your application through Entity Framework. In this sample, I'm going to use some data from the AdventureWorks 2012 database, and specifically from the person.address table. All right, so there's a the table right there. And as you can see, within the definition there, there's a spatial location field that is of type geography. So this has geographic data, locations on the surface of the Earth. All right, I want to show you that data. So I'm going to come in here and script the table as, select to, new query editor window. Get that out of the way. And I'll go ahead and execute that query. As you can see, there's 19,614 rows of data within this table. Now, if you haven't worked with spatial data within SQL Server yet, you might be surprised to see that there's this nice tab here. Okay, let me move some of the stuff out of the way, make this a little bit bigger. Okay, so now, the red message here, there's just too many spatial objects to display within the spatial results. So it's displaying the first 5,000 objects. Keep in mind that this is geographic data. So these are points, these are locations on the surface of the Earth. Now it doesn't automatically draw the Earth, but you can kind of tell this looks off a lot like the eastern seaboard of the United States. So a lot as you'd expect within uh, Seattle, looks like there might be a few dots north of the border coming down here. None in, doesn't look like any in Mexico or South America. These are probably a cluster of Europe. And then some down here. This is probably the eastern shore of Australia. Maybe some over here on the western shore as well. Okay. All right. So this shows how there's support within SQL Server for plotting these. The spatial results tab is very basic, but it can be useful, particularly with shapes, in order to see to visualize the data within a table. Okay, so now let's go back over to the results here. And I just want to point this out, that Microsoft, when it generates test data, it makes up things like the addresses, not necessarily the city names, but these are almost certainly not real addresses within the city. As you can imagine, they probably get into trouble if this was your address and all of a sudden people start randomly sending mail or sending emails if it's an email address or whatever. But because this is spatial data, this has to be real location within that general vicinity. So in this case, this is Bothell, Washington. Okay. So if you do plot these on a map, you might notice that the location point doesn't correspond to a West Book Street or Avenue, whatever it is. Okay. So just one little caveat. This is generated test data. In a real application, that's not going to be a problem because the address here is going to correspond to the spatial location. Okay, so that's the spatial data that I'm going to use. Let's go back over now to the application. I'm going to go ahead and run it first, open it up in Internet Explorer. And I'll click on this second link, Spatial Data Proximity. And what the application does is it's using the proximity or the distance calculating features within SQL Server, the spatial data types, in order to find the closest location within that database to my hometown, Fairbanks, Alaska. And so it turns out to be in Newton, which is a suburb of Vancouver, and provides the location information. Now, if I really wanted to get fancy, I could bring up Bing Maps or Google Maps and plot the two locations and align and, and so forth. And you can do all of that with spatial data. All right, I'm going to end the application. We can take a look at the code. 
All right, first thing I want to do is come back over here to my AdventureWorks 2012 model. And I'll once again use Model Browser to go over to the Person Schema. And I want to find the Address table, and there it is right there. Okay, so there's the spatial location. I'll press F4 to bring up the Properties window, and notice that the type is Geography. And this is a type that the Entity Data Model Wizard reverse engineered from the AdventureWorks 2012 database. This isn't something that I had to set after the fact because geography is now a supported data type within Entity Framework 5. All right, so if I select this, you can see the full range of data types that are available. What's interesting here is that you're not limited to just the geography and the geometry types. You have all of the individual types within each of those data types as well. So in the case of the general geography, you can store any of these other objects here within this data type. But if you know that you're only going to have points, then you can select geography point. And this actually might be appropriate for this application because all of the data within that address table is point data. Okay, so you can get very granular with the type of shapes that are going to be stored within this table within the database. And all of these types come from the system.spatial namespace. It's not something that the model is reverse engineering from the database. Okay, so it's built into the designer. And then we can take a look at the home controller for the code that generates that page. So it's very simple. What it's doing is I'm generating this location that's going to be a point, and I just basically went to, I forget if I use Google Earth or, or Maps, I think it's probably Google Earth, and got the location for downtown Fairbanks. This isn't my actual home location, but downtown Fairbanks. And I used the DB Geography object that, again, is part of the system.data.spatial namespace, and the from text method in order to generate a geography type that I save in that location variable that represents downtown Fairbanks. All right, and then next thing I do is I just use a link expression in order to get a location of the closest, and I use the addresses entity set. I'm going to include the state and province so I can get the address information and include the state and province name instead of just a, a number. And I'm going to order by the distance from that location and that is going to sort them in the shortest distances from Fairbanks to whatever point within that address's entity set. And then I just take the first one there. And I use first to default because maybe the table is empty, or maybe all the spatial location information is empty. And then I just pass that geography object to the view. And then if we take a look at the view, home, spatial data, that geography object becomes the model type, actually that address object, becomes the model type for the view, and then I just have to read off the properties off of that single address item. So overall, it's pretty simple. All of the hard stuff is already built into the spatial data types themselves, and the designer and tools of Entity Framework 5.